This elderly gentleman with a heart cataract, hand movements vision and a normal B scan was taken up for toric intraocular lens implantation. We did not expect any untoward intraoperative events, but things did not go as planned, though the eventual outcome was pretty satisfactory. Like in all heart cataracts, we stained the anterior capsule with tripen blue dye and then sculpted a preliminary groove. Then we proceeded with vertical phaco chop using the Chang chopper with a tip length of 2 mm. Surgery progressed uneventfully. Chopping is accomplished with a higher vacuum and the nucleus is engaged at a deep plane before lateral separation is effected. We ought to ensure minimal distortion of the capsular back and the rexus margin thereby avoiding trauma to the support structures. The nucleus was rotated and further phaco chop was carried out. All these maneuvers were unhindered and smooth. The separated nuclear fragment was consumed. So far, there is no evidence of trouble. Subsequent to this, the nucleus behavior was little bizarre. It could not be rotated freely as before and the followability was reduced. At this juncture, we suspected a capsulozonular complication. Not sure whether a posterior capsular rent or zonular dialysis on the nasal aspect. We decided to employ the Visco Shield strategy to continue with FACO in a safe manner. A dispersive OVD was injected anterior to the suspicious area and the residual nucleus was floated anteriorly. Then it was manipulated in the pupillary plane with the Sinsky hook and FACO emulsification continued uneventfully. Lower parameters were used. The dispersive OVD injection was repeated a couple of times more and the final nucleus fragment was removed from the eye. Before withdrawing the FACO handpiece from the anterior chamber, OVD was injected from the side port to stabilize the anterior chamber. Then we carefully inspected the area of pathology. A large zone of posterior capsular ren was visible nasally and it looked as if there was a dialysis of the posterior capsule from the nasal capsular phonix. We noticed a few chunks of cortical material in the anterior vitreous. Rest of the posterior capsule appeared to be pretty stable. There was no disturbance of the anterior vitreous phase. This was achieved since we were careful to work within a closed chamber environment. Gentle bimanual irrigation aspiration was performed to remove the residual cortex. Anterior chamber was never allowed to shallow at any stage. A dry technique for cortex removal is also a good option at this juncture. If needed, it may be wise to leave behind a little amount of residual cortex. At this point, we abandoned the original plan of using a toric intraocular lens since the bag is compromised and not stable enough to receive an intraocular lens depending on it for stabilization. Instead, we decided to implant a three-piece hydrophobic acrylic intraocular lens in the sulcus. Care was taken to place the leading haptic anterior to the rexus margin, but since we could not be sure about the exact placement, we again maneuvered it into the anterior chamber. We could confidently place the trailing haptic into the ciliary sulcus. We went back again to the leading haptic which was relocated in the sulcus using a Sinsky hook. We ensured that the long axis of the lens was placed at the area of maximum capsular support. Pupil was constricted with intracameral pilocarpin. The intraocular lens is very well centered. It is always a good idea to close the incision with a suture whenever there is a capsular zonular complication. Postoperatively, the patient regained a best corrected visual equity of 6 by 9 N6.